In the previous part, we have introduced and analyzed Bloom filters to filter elements in a data stream. Now, let, let's, let's talk about the second problem, which is how to count distinct elements in a data stream. Here, the problem setting is that the data stream uh, consists of a universe of elements chosen from a set of size n, and we're trying to maintain a count of the number of distinct elements seen so far. For example, let's say that we have this data stream here consists of a lot of letters, and then our goal would be to count uh, the number of distinct letters in the stream as we, as we go. And one obvious approach is to maintain the set of elements seen so far. That means we, we can just keep a hash table of all the distinct elements seen so far. And here are some example applications of this problem. The first application would be uh, to answer questions such as how many different words are found among the web pages being crawled at a size. So why do we want to do this? This is because the unusually low or high numbers could indicate artificial pages or spam pages. So this answering this question can help us to, uh, to perform, for example, spam detection. And the second application may be to answer questions like how many different web pages does each customer request a day or in a week? And another one application may be to answer questions like how many distinct products have we sold in the last week? Now, a real problem uh, when we use the obvious approach is that what if we do not have space to maintain the set of elements seen so far? What if we need a really, really large hash table that we cannot afford? And in this case, the best you can do will be just to estimate the count in an unbiased way. And we, can, we need to accept the fact that the count may have a little error, but we can limit the probability that the error is too large. So how do we do this? One way to do this is to use the flagellate martin approach. And this approach goes like this. We will first pick a hash function, h, that maps each of the n elements to at least a log n bits. Um, for, and then for each stream element a, let's say that r of a uh, is the number of trailing zeros uh, in h a. So basically this r a is the position of the first one if we count from the right. For example, let's say uh, that we have element a and the hash value of this element would be 12. And since 12 is actually 1100 in binary, and we can see that it has two trailing zeros, therefore R of A will be equal to two, will be equal to two right? And then at the same time as the stream goes, we will keep track of the maximum, uh, maximum R A we have ever seen. And we didn't know this as, uh, as the capital R. So formally, the R is the maximi maximization of, of RA over all the items A uh, we have seen so far. Then the estimate uh, we made would be just, uh, we would just say that the estimated number of the distinct elements is equal to two to the power of capital R. So why does it work? Now here is a very, very rough and heuristic intuition uh, of why this approach would work. Let's say uh, we already know that this HA actually it hashes A with equal probability to any of the N values, right? It's a, uh, it's a valid hash function. And then HA will be a sequence of uh, log N bits. Then we will, we will know that uh, two to the power of minus r fraction of all the a's will have a tail of r zeros. Why is that? Intuitively, you can think of it like, think of it like this. We can see that actually about 50%, 50% of all the a's will be hashed 
to uh, uh, binary numbers of the form uh, like uh, star, 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 uh, and it ends with a zero, right? Because it's very natural. And at the same time, for example, uh, about about twenty five percent of all the A's will be has two binary numbers of the form star star zero zero. So basically, it will end with two zeros. Right? So if we saw the longest tail uh, of R equals to two, then we have probably seen about four distinct items so far. Right? So in general we will need to hash about two to the power of R distinct items before we see one with a tail of R zeros. And this is a very rough intuition of why this works. And let's, let's show why this algorithm works in a more formal, formal way. Let's say that M is the number of distinct elements seen so far in the stream. So basically our goal is to estimate this M as accurate as possible. And formally, we will in the next slides and we will show that the probability of finding a tail of R zeros would go to one if this number M is actually much, much larger than two to the number of R. And the probability will go to zero if this M is much smaller than two to the power of R. And since in practice, since in practice, uh, the probability of finding a tail of uh, capital R zeros is uh, is never going to be close to one, and it's also never going to be close to zero. Therefore, in practice, this two to the two to the power of capital R will almost always be around M. And next, let's see how we can prove this two state two statements here. So from, the, from one of the previous slides, we already know that the probability uh, given HR ends in at least R0 is two to the power of minus R. And mostly this is because the fact that HA, it, it hashes elements uniformly at random. And, and then using this fact, the probability of not seeing a tail of length r among n element in the string will be given by this equation below. And why is this? This is because as we, uh, as we see before, the probability that a given h a ends, at, ends in at least r zero is two to the power of minus r, then on, on the, opposite, on the opposite side, the probability that given H A ends in fewer than R zeros will be one minus that, right? It will, it will be one minus two to the power of minus R. Then since we have R, since we have M elements, then the probability that all elements end in fewer than R zeros would be, uh, would be this term raised to the power of M. Now, based on this, we will be ready to prove uh, the two statements that we mentioned before. And before that, we will need to use a trick that we have used in the previous part, which is to uh, rewrite this rewrite this term uh, as e to the power of minus m times two to the power of minus many times. And with this, the probability of not finding a tail of length r would be as follows. We will analyze it in two different cases. If let's say that m is much smaller, if it's much smaller than two to the power of r, then the probability uh, tends to one. Why is this? This is because if m is much smaller than two to the power of r, then this number m over two to the power of r Will, will approach uh, will approach zero, right? And if this number approach to zero, this whole term here will approach to one. Therefore, the probability of finding a tail of length r will tend to zero, which is the opposite of one. So this is the first statement we have proved. For the second statement, uh, let's say that uh, if m is much larger than two to the power of r, 
then the probability, this probability uh, will tend to zero. And why is this? Similarly, if M is much larger than two to the power of R, then we have that uh, M over two to the power of R uh, will approach uh, infinity. And if we approach infinity, then basically it says that this whole number will, will approach zero. Right? And therefore, the probability of, of finding a tail of length r uh, will tend to one, uh, which, is, which is the opposite of zero. So doing this, we have already uh, proved this following two statements. We have shown that the probability of finding a tail of r zeros uh, will go to one if m is much larger than two to the power of r, and the probability will go to zero if m is much smaller than two to the power of r. And then in practice, the probability of seeing a tail of capital R zeros is actually uh, neither one nor zero, right? Therefore, this number two to the power of r will almost always be around. And therefore, it's actually a very good estimate of the number of distinct elements in the stream.